Hello and welcome to the Regional Report. The 2018 Ministerial Formation is underway at Pentecost Bible College. Pensos, a subsidiary of the Church of Pentecost, has purchased a truck over $60,000. The Pentecost Military Fellowship, which started 2016, has seen a tremendous growth and we bring you some report from some selected bases. And also a visit to Spanish community of the COP saw some challenges. We also bring you some report from the field trip. Welcome back to the regional report and now the report in detail. The cutting edge of the church, PBC, Pentecost Bible College, has received nine ministers for training this year. Opening the ceremony, the president of the college, Apostle Imbayan Mahango, emphasized on the fact that many were called but few were chosen. Hence, the ministers should count it a privilege to have been called leaders of the church. God does not just call us, he evaluates us. Isn't it? Yeah. You can't have, making a choice presupposes a process of evaluation. There has to be some form of assessment. There's never, you can't make a choice. You see, if many are called, few are chosen. It means that those who are chosen are what? Fewer than what? Those called, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so what kind of rubric, what kind of yardstick do you use to determine, okay, let me have these few and leave the many. What kind of yes, you do? I remember, you remember when someone went to, to anoint one of the sons of God, Jesus, he landed on David. He called one and said, My, you must be this one. Look at how tall he is. I said, No. What, what, what surprises me is what the text says, the Lord says, No, it's not him, for I have what? I have rejected him. What does that imply? But that's because at least it was considered. Yeah. Is that not the case? Yes. Oh yeah, you, you don't reject something you have not what? Pay attention to. So you picked it up and you looked at it. Ah, I've rejected it. So God rejects. The Church of Pentecost subsidiary Pensos has purchased a truck over 60,000 in line with ministerial movement and relocation. An interview with Apostle Augustus Marty, the leader of Pensos, had this to say. You asked me about the uh, trailer that is out there picking the ministers. Yes, uh, we realize the growth of the church and the number of transfers we do in a year. We uh, realize that it is time for us to get our own uh, transport that will smoothly and professionally move our ministers around as we shift those giftings to the edifying of the brethren within the nation. This was embedded in the five-year vision of the church. And thank God uh, this year we are able to accomplish that part of it. It will not be only for the transporting of the ministers, but also any transportation need as the numbers in the church increase, as we open new assemblies, uh, constructions are being done in various places and we realize that as we uh, move on as the Lord opened doors for us there will be that transportation need in the system and again I stand here to give glory and honor to God for opening that door for us to be able to secure our own we take a commercial break and we'll be right back yeah, 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 this is the love and power experience. The 2018 conference, the stage is set. I can't believe it's free. Yes, it's free. The excitement, the joy. Can't wait. Under the chairmanship of the national head, Apostle Michael Ajma Mwakun, Reverend Stephen Anponsa, hosted by Pastor and Mrs. Dr. Cynthia Potter. Challenges! We still praise the living God! Ministering in song, Pekin Yawo Sayers, Emmanuel Smith from UK, guest pastor, Kofi Dacha from Canada. I can't fix your heart because your heart is something that you have to say, God, I want to be in line. Sharing her story is Dr. Juliana Boateng. Venue, the Rehoboth Assembly, PIWC, 1450 Valley Road, Wayne, New Jersey. 
Welcome back. A survey conducted by the church to locate Ghanaians working and serving in all forces saw a tremendous amount of them, hence the need to establish military fellowships in some selected bases in the United States. Their coordinator overseer, Dr. Captain Dana Berima, gave reports of how the fellowship is growing in the bases across the North American region. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I am Pastor Barima, uh, the coordinator for the Military Fellowship. I'm super excited to reach you all the way from uh, the beautiful island of Hawaii. It is my desire to use this video to see how you're doing and also put perspective to our fellowship. As we are all aware, the Military Fellowship was established by the leadership of our church to ensure that all members who are in service can be connected and also encourage one another to spare each other to excellence and also to make sure that we have the means to evangelize wherever we are and have good Christian fellowship. In light of this, the leadership have also decided to divide the United States into three zones. We'll have the West Coast zone, we'll have the Central zone, and we'll have the East Coast zone. These zones are to ensure that we are effective on the ground. For the West Coast Zone, it will be led by our own brother, Brother Amwa, who is stationed at San Diego and is in the Navy. For the Central Zone, it will be led by Elder Nana Oheni, who is in the Air Force and is stationed at San Antonio. And for the East Coast Zone, it will be led by our dear Elder Samson Alute, who is in the Army and stationed at Fort Stewart in Hinesville, Georgia. So in light of this, I just want you to know that there are more activities coming at the zonal levels to ensure that we can encourage one another, we can educate one another, and we can be there for one another. Above all, it is our aim to ensure that each and every one of us can stay connected to our faith in Christ whilst we serve in the military service. God bless you and expect more from this fellowship to see each other, to encourage one another, and to build one another on. The church's outreach to the Spanish community captured in the 2021 vision has seen a tremendous growth, a visit by the regional report team to College Park in Maryland, one of the assemblies, saw some challenges that they are facing. The resident pastor overseer Stephen Kumi threw some highlights of the challenges that a church is facing in College Park. Esa de esa mesa. Y pones comida, pones abundancia, pones todo lo que yo necesito. Porque tu vara y tu callado me sustenta, hermano. Eso es lo que Dios hace. A de esa mesa delante de mí, en presencia de mis angustiadores. Como quien dice, venga la angustia, venga el problema. Yeah, we thank the Lord so much for having the Maryland uh, Spanish district. By the grace of God, we are doing very well. Uh, the church is uh, moving on and uh, we are having new members come in and join us every time. And by God's grace, we also have our challenges of transportation whereby we need to get our members to church. We are praying that God will give us a van as soon as possible so that we can go and actually transport our members to church. But apart from that, God has been very good to us. Um, the uh, ministries are growing and at the same time we are seeing a lot of new faces join us. We are praying that God will continue to increase the church and continue to move the church forward. Uh, gracias a Dios que estamos siguiendo y estamos luchando para la reino de Dios. Dios está con nosotros y orar para nosotros que todo va a estar bien. Y ahora, gracias a Dios, estamos creciendo. Entonces estamos orando que Dios va a estar con nosotros. Y en el nombre de Jesucristo, Dios le bendiga. Amén. We take our second commercial break and we will be right back. Are you worried or disturbed, battling with the storms of life, or are you gasping for a helping hand? Just know that God's love for you is bigger than what you can imagine. This is Rehoboth. This is Rehoboth. That same spirit. This is Rehoboth. This is Rehoboth. Expand, excel, enlarge. I want you to come and join us. Come and have a great time, have a great experience. An oasis of love in a troubled world. It's such an exciting season 
for this church right here in the city of Wayne, the Rehoboth PIWC. This is a place where the contemporary meets the supernatural. God's presence is here. It's a place of God's love where the troubled, the hopeless, those who are giving up on the situations of life can come and find renewal of hope, renewal of strength. Jesus is here. We love it. We invite you to join us, Rehoboth PIWC. God bless you. You're welcome here this and every Sunday from 10 to 12. Welcome back to Regional Report. The induction and retirement service of the Church of Pentecost new chair elect and the outgoing chair has taken place in Ghana, respectively. Apostle Eric Kwabena Nyamiche as a new chair to succeed Apostle Professor Poku Oyina secured a total of 147 yes votes as against four nays. Out of the 151 total valid votes cast, obtaining a 97.5% of the total valid vote cast by the Electoral College. In his message to the church, the outgoing chairman stressed the need for the church to rally behind the new chairman with all spiritual support needed to enable the new chairman function effectively for the Church of Pentecost. Responding to your leaders. Responding to your leaders. Now, you must see your leader as the servant of God. You see, John had received a revelation. If you come to Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, he said, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John. So all of us are his servants. However, the revelation was given to the servant John. So for you to allow the glorified Jesus to work in the church, you must first accept the one he has given to you as a servant. Acknowledge your leader as God's servant. The one that God has chosen. God cannot make all of us apostles, all of us prophets, all of us international missions directors, all of us general secretaries, and then all of us chairman. One will be the chairman. One will be the general secretary. One will be the international missions director. Then accept him. Because you cannot give that honor to yourself. It is the Lord who would have to appoint one of us as a servant. So you should accept the leader as your servant. Once you accept the leader as God's servant, then you should accept that God speaks to his servants through the people. He causes you to will and to act, receiving those things and then passing them to the church. If you accept the leader as your servant, then you need to pray for him. You need to encourage the leader. All these are, that is accepting the leader as God's servant. The second point is that when you, once you accept him as God's servant, then you should respect your leader. The servant of God. Respect your leader. Sometimes some people do some things to their leaders and you don't know whether they truly respect them or not. Respect is not when you are taking the bag of the leader. When he is there. Or saluting him. Yes, a master. Respect is when you still respect him in his absence. When you are with friends and you are dressing, that Opokunina, that Eric Nyamiche, who is that to me? If he's not there. Then if you see him, oh, Master, yes, sir. Oh, Papa, Papa. Hypocrisy. Oh, may the Lord God Almighty have mercy on us. So when the person is not there, you must respect him. Then you truly respect the person as the servant of God. And then when there is a crisis, you see, when there's no problem, it's not difficult to accept people, believe them, and respect them. But when something happens and you don't understand, when there's a crisis, and when even you think the person is wrong, and still he's a leader, 
Here you see politicians fail many times, abusing their leaders. People's coming out, announcing things publicly, destroying their own groups and parties. What is the respect? Then later on they come, oh, we please, we beg you. You've already destroyed the thing. He may forgive you. Yet, you might have destroyed something that can never be mended. So when there is a challenge, a problem, and you are able to respect that person as the man of God, then you are really accepting the person as the servant of the Almighty God. Paul tells us that the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. Give them that one. And if you do that, you help the leader. And then the last point is that obey your leader. You know how you can allow that glorified Christ to work in us through his leader. You must accept the leader as God's servant. You must respect the leader and you must obey the leader. John had to obey Christ. Then wrote down those revelations and then sent the revelations to the people. First, yearly, first of all, we read from church history that some of them really accepted it. Others were not able to pass on the baton. But some were able to receive the baton that were handed over to them. The Bible is very strong on obedience. Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that they, are, they, they, so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. For that would be of no advantage to you. This is bringing the message to a close. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. For that will be of no advantage to you. If you unnecessarily criticize your leaders, your leaders accuse them, pulled in them, they would have to manage those things. They would have to manage those ones before their minds will be clear for them to read the Bible, meditate, concentrate, and pray, receive from the Lord and give it to you. It's of no advantage to us. And therefore, I appeal that you do not unnecessarily criticize the incoming chairman as some did to me. The national apostolization in the North American region has come to an end under the theme, building a kingdom that is centered on Christ through the basic message. We bring you excerpts from the apostolization across the North American region. Apostolization um, simply means uh, coming to the apostles' feet. Uh, to listen and also uh, to uh, receive from them and also uh, to grow in the word of the Lord and also uh, be spiritually matured. Um, that is, uh, in Acts of Apostles, we see um, the apostles uh, teaching and leading the uh, church to pray. And the Bible says that uh, peace was instilled and the church grew there by and by. So, apostolization is for uh, teaching edification, uh, maturing the saints, so that uh, the church continues to be firmly grounded uh, for the kingdom of God. Hello everyone, this is Gloria Okeke and I'm here with the Apostolization Week just discussing about what went down. As you, as we can see, we've had interviews from a pastor, Elvis Boateng. So they have uh, so much to share about what happened at Apostolization Week. As for me, I was able to attend and it was great. I learned so much about just being apostles of, of the word, being apostles of the message. and what apostolization really means and what message we're supposed to send out to the world as you guys know the end times is near but it's great that we're learning these things and preparing ourselves for the community we find ourselves in Suppose I am hard pressed between the two having a desire to depart and be with Christ which is far better hello some people who, who migrate from Africa and get to 
America. When they get to America, they say they have come to the end of the world. <laughs> Who tell you that? There is a place that we are envisaging. That we are expecting. That we will go and live forever. You know we have these kind of events for you just to come and learn. Try not to miss out on the next events that we have. For Church of Pentecost USA Regional Report, this is Gloria OKK reporting. And finally, youth and pencil leaders in the New Jersey region has held its strategic leaders retreat. Abena Mantea brings you report. We're here at the 2018 New Jersey region youth and pencil ministry strategic leadership retreat. So we have leaders all around the region coming here to study and also to learn about how to impact our generation in this current climate. We're expecting God to just move mountains and just give people insight on ways that we can draw youth closer to the Lord and find those who have left the church and hopefully bring them back so we can all just convene and continue worshiping again. Spirit, as we travel towards our heavenly destination, there comes times along the way uh, when we find ourselves making trips through desert-like places. As we head towards our heavenly destination, there comes times that you will find yourself traveling through what we may call the valley of the shadow of death. You will find yourself in places where there isn't enough water to drink to carry you forward. But at those times and in those seasons, the Lord expects us to run to the brook. The number two stands for distinction and separation. So in the second generation of this church in the United States, there must be a distinction. There must be a separation. Things must be clear cut and God's name should be glorified and lifted. The COP USA Regional Report, Abena Amenomantia. To end our regional report for today, a recap of our major stories. The 2018 Ministry of Formation cohorts is underway in Wayne, New Jersey, here at the Pentecost Bible College. Pentecost Men's Movement has held across the regions and districts its annual regional week. Pensos, a subsidiary of the Church of Pentecost, has purchased a truck over $60,000 in line with ministerial movement as captured in the Vision 2021. The Pentecost Military Fellowship, which was started in 2016, is making tremendous growth on some selected basis in the spread of the gospel. There has been an induction service and a retirement service for the chairman-elect Apostle Eric Kwabena Nyamiche and also Apostle Professor Opoku Oyina, who retires from active service from the Church of Pentecost. On that note, I bring you the end of original report. My name has been Samuel Essan Hill. Thank you.